Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and I want to find out which has the best battery life between these flagship phones. Now, of course, I want this to be a fair test, so I'm making sure all the settings are the same. They all have the exact same brightness on the screen. So as you can see from the specs, we do have different refresh rates, and also in the case of the S20, the OnePlus, and the Oppo, different resolution options. So what I've done is either kept them at the default setting, or in the case of the OnePlus and the Oppo, set them to auto switch. So the S20 is actually at 120Hz at Full HD+, because you don't have an option for Quad HD+, with a high refresh, whereas the OnePlus and the Oppo have both the high refresh and the resolution set to automatically switch based on battery life. The point is, this is how most of us would want to use our phones, so I'm keeping this as real world as possible. I'm sure you guys appreciate these videos take a long time to make, so if you could give me a thumbs up or maybe hit that subscribe button below, that would be incredible. So for this test, I'm running through YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, a couple of games, including Call of Duty Mobile and Asphalt 9, as well as recording some 4K video, running a benchmark, and then rinse and repeating until they die, pretty much. So obviously it's a pretty intensive real world test. And straight away, we can see the S20 Ultra is falling some way behind the pack. Although I do need to make clear that this is the Exynos 990 version. This is the model that I have access to in the UK. And actually, after this video, go and check out my Snapdragon vs Exynos video, because it's pretty illuminating, actually. The Exynos isn't very good compared to the Snapdragon. And actually, in a test with the standard S20, the Snapdragon still had 13% battery left when the Exynos died. So bear that in mind, if you have a Snapdragon S20 Ultra, then it will perform a bit better than this, but we'll come back to that at the end. At this stage though, it's pretty clear the iPhone 11 Pro Max is taking the lead, with the OnePlus 8 and the Oppo Find X2 Pro coming in sort of a close second, third place, and then the P40 Pro, and then the Pixel 4 XL. The only phone that doesn't have a high refresh rate is the iPhone, so I am expecting that to do quite well here because obviously that is a bit of a drain on the battery. And the S20, the OnePlus, and the Oppo go for the smoothest 120 hertz. So that will have an effect on battery life. And also, just look at the sizes of the battery, all the way from 3700 milliamps on the Pixel to 5000 on the S20. But then again, we've also got a range of screen sizes from 6.3 to 6.9, again for the Pixel and Samsung respectively. And then the processor, the RAM, and of course the battery size all come into play. Keep an eye on the timer on the right though, because while we'll see winners and losers here, these are all incredible flagship phones, and you can't really go wrong with any of them. Also, don't worry, I know there's loads more phones out there. For example, when I get my hands on the Sony Xperia 1 Mark II, the Xiaomi Mi 10 Pro, and LG G9 among others, I'll make more of these battery tests. For this video, I just wanted to include the latest phone from each of these brands. But it seems the S20 Ultra is the first one to fail at 8 hours and 20 minutes. That's not a bad performance, but it is last of the pack here, unfortunately. So let's get back into it and see which one's next. And it's the Pixel about 5 minutes later. So we've got 4 phones left in the pack, and actually 3 of them are pretty close, although the iPhone clearly is out in front. At the 8 hour 45 minute mark, we're on 10% on the Huawei, 14 on the OnePlus, 15 on the Oppo, and still 28 on the iPhone. But then, after another intensive game of Asphalt 9, the P40 Pro is down to 6%. I think we've got our fourth place coming up. And there we go. During the 4K recording challenge, the Huawei P40 Pro has finally given up at 9 hours and 8 minutes. That's a very respectable performance. And consider last year's Mate 30 Pro had an even bigger 4500mAh battery, I think it would have given the iPhone a run for its money. And then about half an hour later, 9 hours 35, that's it for the Oppo Find X2 Pro, with just 1% left on the OnePlus 8 Pro. The OnePlus and the Oppo are incredibly similar phones in terms of design and specs, but incredibly, even at 1%, it just carries on and carries on. The OnePlus 8 Pro will not die. In fact, it's nearly half an hour later, just sitting at 1%, that the OnePlus 8 Pro finally gives up, and that gives us our second place, which, no surprise really, leaves the iPhone 11 Pro Max as the winner of this battery test. And just for closure, it took another 90 minutes for the iPhone to finally die, 11 hours and 30. And if you're watching this and you just jumped to the end of the video to get the results, then, well, fair enough. Work smart, not hard. So in last place, the S20 Ultra, which I must admit is quite disappointing given that huge 5000 mAh battery, the fact that it's only Full HD Plus with 120Hz, but unfortunately I think a big part of the issue is that Exynos chip inside. If this was a Snapdragon version, I reckon we'd get an extra hour out of it, and it could have come in third place. Then we have the Pixel 4 XL. It's the smallest screen, but also the smallest battery life, but it does have a 90Hz refresh rate. If I was a betting man, I would have said that was going to come last, so kind of a surprise that it came fifth. 
In fourth place, we have the Huawei P40 Pro. And I think it did a great job. Although I think what may be an issue sometimes is not having the most optimized apps. For example, my YouTube test had to be done through the web browser as there isn't a native app. So I reckon if you were just using apps from the Huawei App Gallery, this would have lasted longer, but still a good showing from Huawei. Then in third place, the Oppo Find X2 Pro, which was neck and neck with the OnePlus throughout, but then fell short of the final hurdle, which gave second place to the OnePlus 8 Pro, which I have to say, in my experience, OnePlus phones have always had good, but not necessarily amazing battery life. But actually in this test, this was the best performing Android phone in terms of battery life, which I did not expect coming into this. But in first place with the appropriately gold color is the iPhone 11 Pro Max. To be fair, it has the least amount of RAM. It's also the only phone with a 60 Hertz screen, but relative to the others, the battery size isn't actually that big. It's all about that efficiency and optimization between the A13 chip, the rest of the hardware, and of course, iOS 13. But do let me know in the comments which phone you'd most like to see in the next one. So I hope you guys found that useful. It did take me 11 and a half hours to actually run the test. So if I could get a thumbs up and maybe a sub for that, that would be amazing. Thank you so much for watching guys. And I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.